So in the last video, what we did is we cleaned up our code a little bit. And one of the things that we did is we made ourselves a style file, a .sty file for our preamble, which contains all of the bits and pieces that we, um, that we want. What you'll find, I think, over time is the more LaTeX code that you write, the more packages you'll accumulate that you think, well, I really can't live without that one. I really need that one um, in my life. And also macros, you'll find a, a whole bunch of macros, which you just automatically sort of need to have every time you're writing a document. So I like to sort of recycle my preamble. I've got one that I've, I use pretty commonly right here. It's just a text file, obviously. And what I'll do is I'll just copy all of that and I'm going to just dump it straight in here. Okay, so now I've got a much longer preamble, although it's still kind of manageable. You can see I've got a lot of, of the macros that I like to use. Um, and then there's some more complicated macros. Now, a lot of these macros, I'm not uh, crediting the author of them. This one came from Stack Exchange, which is a really, really great resource for, for learning LaTeX. And I want to thank all the Stack Exchange contributors for teaching me so much about how LaTeX works. Uh, so if you want to find out, for instance, where this one came from, searching for forward slash one asked Stack Exchange, you'll probably um, find that post. Uh, and what I'll do uh, down in the description of this video, everyone, is I will um, I will put this preamble down there as a file you can download. And that way you could, if you wanted to use it in your document, you could just click on this upload button and dump this one hyphen preamble.sty file into your code and you'll be good to go. You'll have all of these packages um, that you need. Um, but anyway, so if we just have a look, I'm, I'm guessing that this should still compile um, without any warnings or errors. Uh, so that's a really good thing. Just briefly going through it, I'll try and keep this video a little bit shorter because this is mainly about dis distributing this list of packages that I like. I'll just explain some of these packages uh, and what they do. So microtype, what this does is it, it just fixes up the spacing between the letters, more or less. It's, it's to do with kerning, I think would be the technical term. And it allows characters to overhang lines a little bit, um, which is probably going to be a little bit hard to see on, on this. But obviously the left-hand margin uh, is going to be razor sharp, isn't it? If we put a ruler up there, all of these glyphs here are going to butt up against the left margin perfectly. It looks like that's the case over here on the right margin as well, but actually when you've got microtype installed, and I'd recommend using it in any LaTeX file um, that you ever write, what you'll find is that this little semicolon is actually going to be a little bit further across than the right margin, strictly speaking, should allow. Um, but microtypes just allowed that, and that's going to allow the spacing of the words in this paragraph to be a little bit better. So that's basically what it does. No one's ever going to notice that unless they're a, a typesetting geek. So your average Joe on the street won't notice that. They'll think that that's a razor sharp margin there. Um, but what it's going to mean is you won't get so many rivers flowing through your text. You're not going to have these nasty white spaces throughout there. So that's what that one does. You can read more about that um, on the internet. Uh, Multicol, that's a package uh, that you can use if you want to um, have multiple columns for some reason. I don't normally use that, but it comes in handy from time to time. Um, this is how I like to set up my captions for my tables and for my figures. So that's something, I don't know if that was in a previous video, but now you can see that we've got boldface type for figure one. So if we just comment that just briefly now, so if we find that, select it, command forward slash, and comment that, we'll go back to the default behavior for captions in LaTeX, which I think is not quite as nice. I don't like that that way that that's done. It's okay, but it's, it's to me, it's just not quite as nice. And specifically for tables, I think we've got a table here. Um, 
Let's have a look. Or maybe in the AMS art document class, it gets it right. Sometimes I think the spacing's not quite right, but that actually looks pretty good to me. Um, so that's what the caption package does with my particular options. So I guess that's something that I should mention. Here we've actually said we want to use the caption, the, the package called caption. Here we're saying these are the options that we would like to use with the caption um, package. Ah, so maybe, yeah, maybe that's what I needed to do to demonstrate that. So if I comment all of that stuff, look at what happens to my, my table caption here. Oh no, it's still, it's still fine. I thought it would butt up against the table a little bit more than it is doing, but it's not doing that. So just ignore everything that I just said. Anyway, I like to have that for the bold face type. And obviously you could change that. You could say, you know, I want to have sans serif type or I want to do various other things. Uh, the float package, this allows us to be a bit more strict with where we want to place things. So um, for example, if we come in here to our table, at the moment we're just saying, hey, put this wherever you want. But now that we've got the float package in square brackets, we can put a capital H to say, no, we really want this here. And if you look at where that appears in our code here, uh, where are we? This is our package. So now that we've got that capital H, it should be showing up after is shown in table blah, blah. So let's have a look. So right now it's not, but when we compile it, can you see that it says an example is shown in table blah blah and there our, our table goes. Okay, so that's what the float package is all about. It basically allows us a little bit more power with where exactly we want our tables to appear. I quite like the default sort of behavior about where LaTeX puts its floating material anyway, so I'm not going to have that capital H option right now. Um, okay, continuing on. I said this would be a short video, but famous last words. Uh, what else can I tell you about in here? These are just some various maths packages. We can talk about those in more detail, maybe in a another video. Um, definitely this will need to be discussed, my axis style, but that will come in a later video. I've uncommented, uh, sorry, I've commented at the moment these packages because I don't really need them right now. So I'm just leaving them in there. This is for drawing colored boxes. Um, sometimes they're useful. Also this I've commented out, this is all my chemistry packages that I need if I'm writing a chemistry paper, um, but I don't need them right now. So I've just commented them. These are a bunch of macros, as I said before. These are some more complicated macros. These are the, the theorem and definition environments and so forth that I'm using. So anyway, that's the basic idea. Um, we've got a lot of packages here, but still our preamble, the stuff that appears before begin document is rather clean because we've packaged things up and put it over here.